promised you guys a really basic face drawing tutorial, a demonstration of the face in turnaround. And since my camera quit recording midway through this painting demonstration and I have to redraw these anyway, I thought it would be good to draw them on camera for you guys. I've already got the first three views started, so I'm just working on the second two. And we're gonna do a three quarter view. So I start with a circle, then I draw an ellipse or an oval in the circle. So this is kind of like a chunk taken out of the circle. I do the crosshairs across the face. Then I begin drawing the sort of the plane of the face. I always think of it kind of like a shovel. And this is just me really roughly sketching these in so I can tighten them up on camera for you guys. Now I'm gonna do the view to the right, circle, circle, crosshairs, two descending planes. Okay, now I can show you how to kind of tighten this up. And we're gonna start with the frontal view. And you can also kind of think of it as a circle and then an oval around it, kind of tightening up the face shape now I'm going to draw the third eye, which helps me place the other two eyes. And I'm pretty much just trying to recreate the face I had for the other demonstration. Circle for the nose and then placement for the lips. Eyebrow cavity. So this is going to be the apex of the eyebrows where the eyebrows go. And then this is sort of going to be in shadow. And then the hairline up here. And the ears go from the top of the eyebrows to the bottom of the nose. And you can kind of vary that depending. So I don't actually like too much how that face is coming out. It's not as cute as the other face. So I'm gonna grab an eraser and kind of modify it to suit my taste. I'm also gonna grab a piece of scratch paper because I'm getting graphite all over the place. I don't like working with dirty hands and I don't like smudging my work too much especially since this is for another demonstration. So I'm gonna go ahead, kind of redo this to suit my needs. When you're laying out turnarounds like this, usually it's the first face where you're figuring out where all the features are gonna go, that's kind of the hardest. And then everything else is kind of based off this face. So you use it as a template. All right, so we've got kind of our basic little cue ball, bald child, our Aang the Avatar. And you guys have seen me do tutorials before on basic facial construction, basic chibi drawing, that sort of thing. So if you're looking for a more step-by-step -step tutorial on how to draw a face like this, I have plenty of videos like that here on this channel. So I'm not really gonna belabor this particular view. I am, however, going to go into some detail with the other views. So we have four other views to cover. Next is going to be the three quarter view away, or no, towards, I'm sorry. We're not doing any of the full aways for this. So all of these guidelines are to help me lay out where things go on the face. And they usually end up erased, but it helps me draw more consistent faces. So since we've already figured out a lot of these landmarks from this view, I'm just kind of transposing them over here. Sort of sketching things in. And as with any of my tutorials, if there's ever something you guys need to see handled more in depth that you can't pick up from watching me draw or from my explanations, don't hesitate to let me know in the comments below. I'll try to get that demonstration out to you as soon as I can. And sometimes that means I got to record it on my phone. Okay, so actually in this view, the nose needs to go up. It is a little too low. 
and I kind of do two curves to the face, one following the sphere and then another starting from the midpoint of the eyes following the, sp the spade kind of curving out. And that helps me think about how I'm going to line up my facial features in sort of a three-dimensional, on a three-dimensional face. And it's kind of good to keep some of these landmarks in mind because when we're doing our watercolor tutorial, that's gonna help dictate where shadows are gonna fall. So I'm gonna leave some of them for some of these turned away views, just to serve as a reminder to me, help me out. Unfortunately, her eyes are actually a little bit lower in one view than the other, but I am going to progress anyway because I would like to get the painting demonstration portion of this done to some point today. So now we're moving on to the profile. I'm doing the left facing profile. So I'm gonna clean up things a little bit. We have the start of our spade. We've got our crosshair. So we have almost all the information we need. Little, gonna be, end up being a little too big, so we're gonna have to soften and fix. And it's fine to kind of fudge your landmarks a little bit. Profiles are actually pretty difficult for me. I don't actually draw them that often. I draw the three quarter view a lot more. And usually when I'm drawing them, I'm drawing them for Kara herself, or sometimes Naomi. So I usually tend to go for like pretty specific profile views. Oh, that eye is way too close and way too big. I'm looking at this, I might end up having to raise these eyes since they're a little more consistent between the two flanking. All right, we're three faces down. I'm gonna redo the eyes on this middle face since they are now noticeably low. I was hoping I could kind of squeak by with that. Since I'm redoing this, I don't want it to be an all day adventure, but with my luck, it's gonna be an all day adventure. So I'm just raising the eye line a little bit. It's probably gonna result in me completely redrawing the face. Knowing me, raising the eyebrow line. Actually, it looks a lot more consistent, so that's good. And you guys notice, even if I'm doing a redraw, I still draw that third eye for placement. I find it really helpful. I admire to an extent, I admire people who can like just whip out faces without any sort of construction, because that is not me. But a lot of them also complain that they can never draw the same face twice. So using facial construction is a great technique for consistent faces, and it is a huge lifesaver when I do comics. Of course. As I'm talking and sketching, you know, my, my true weak point, my kryptonite, Having a lot of mistakes, it's okay. Done is better than never finished. Mentally perfect doesn't count. I'm gonna rate, fix her nose a bit. Ah, oh, see I told y'all I was gonna end up redrawing the whole face. I'll check back in when I have this finished. Okay, so now we have the three quarter view facing right. So I'm going to delineate the two curves of the face. Sketching my third eye, sketching my two eyes, place the nose, place the mouth. And for me also, the more I draw a face, the easier it gets to draw the face. So 
sometimes when I'm designing a character for, say, like an anthology comic, I'll do like a few pages of their face from different angles and different expressions. And at first it's really off model, but it tends to tighten up. The more I practice and the more I redo it, the more I focus and the more I get to know the character. So, so we have the rough sketch, time to tighten it up a little bit and erase as we go. Also helps if you do a little bit of like warm up sketches before you get started. I am a terrible example. I tell y'all to do things and then I don't do them. Y'all can guess how I did not start my morning. I just dove right in and now I'm paying for that. Warm up sketches are really good because they, they just, they facilitate so many good things. You know, it gets you familiar with drawing things you may not be familiar with in a low pressure situation because they're just sketches. Uh, it helps you practice anatomy. It helps get your hands all limbered up because it's, it's like doing calisthenics for the hands. It trains your eye, it trains your muscle memory. I mean, warm ups are important and good and they should be part of your daily sketch routine. You should make them a priority, even just 10 minutes. You know, some people are like, well, I don't have time for that. But like, you got 10 minutes and I did not dedicate 10 minutes and I should have dedicated 10 minutes. I'm in such a big rush to get from point A to point B. And I have also found, it's not applicable for this because I'm doing this on fluid watercolor paper. I have found though that I enjoy doing facial turnarounds on uh, tracing paper or vellum because you can see through. So it's very easy to line everything up. You don't have to do like guidelines or anything. I mean, you're still gonna have to do your construction or I still have to do my construction, but you don't have to do the guidelines that I like sketched up to make sure everything lined up. And I love using, you can also do it obviously digitally and then, you know, just create a new layer and go from there. TLDR, there are loads of easy ways to do this. Experiment and find what works for you. If I were doing this, say, for something a little more polished, I could have even just printed out blue lines and then sketched on top of that. Okay, we've got a decent three-quarter view facing away, or I keep wanting to say that, facing to the right. So we have one last view to draw. Profile facing to the right. Trying to make sure it's nice and far back enough. I have a tendency to push them all too close together. There are also some profile views I have a much easier time doing. Right facing tends to be a little easier for me for some reason. I don't know why. Because left facing three quarter is usually a little easier for me. All right, divot where the nose is. And again, if you need to see anything done step by step, enlarged in more detail, let me know. Sometimes I like just watching how other people draw things. Oh, her face is different. Do I want to fix it? Why is it different? The nose is too low, the face is too long. And yes, usually if I am alone, I will kind of talk myself through what I'm doing. It helps me think a little more critically and it also sometimes helps me see things, think about things with a different part of my brain and it allows me to find flaws and the reason for flaws that I otherwise missed. Her eyes also too low. And sometimes just acknowledging that something is a flaw, then I can just kind of move on because it's like, well, that's true, but for the purposes of what I'm doing, this isn't a comic page, this isn't a paid illustration, it's just a demonstration. Does it have to be perfect? And I know for some people the answer is yes, and I respect that. But for me, the answer is usually no, because unless the 
unless that's the purpose of the tutorial, then it doesn't really matter to me. We are mostly finished. Just gotta clean this up. So, like I said, third and final time. If there's something you need to see demonstrated in detail, if you wanna see it closer up, done larger, whatever you need, let me know in the comments below. And I will see you guys. I will actually have the watercolor tutorial for this up before this is gonna be up. So we're gonna be a little bit of out of order. That's okay. This provided a nice opportunity for me to do a demonstration for you guys that I've wanted to do anyway. I know I promised I would do a full turnaround of the head demonstration and that will happen eventually. Oh, wow. Look, her chin up here is much longer than her chin there. So fix that a little bit and then maybe go in and fix her as well. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I do want it to be somewhat consistent. Wow, she got a strong chin for a little kid. All right, so I will see you guys in the future, in the past, in the future, in the past, uh, with the watercolor tutorial for this where we're gonna cover light and shading. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below if there's something you need to see in more detail or covered again. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye guys.